has easily become one of my favorite champions within Raid. I knew that when I first saw him coming up for the fusion, that he looked like a fun champion, that I was going to go for him, and I did, getting his 5 star blessing, and I don't regret it. I'm going to go over his entire kit, how I've had him built, and just know that this is a showcase. This isn't exactly a champion guide, but you could take this as a sort of guide if it would befit you. Just keep in mind, I oftentimes have no idea what I'm doing, but I do know that I love my wife. His A1 attacks twice with a 20% chance of repeating the attack. Needless to say, this is going to hurt. Each hit also decreases the target's turn meter by 10%. Great for any type of dungeon that requires a boss to not take turns. It's good in situations where someone else is about to take a turn, maybe in live arena, maybe in classic arena or whatever you might want. Pushing people's turn meter back is useful. His A2, remember it is coded as a single hitter, not an AOE. I'm pretty sure at this point everybody knows it. Attacks all enemies, so that's the misleading part. After hitting the initial selected enemy, all other enemies will be hit in random order. Each subsequent hit, the initial hit, will increase the damage inflicted by 25%, stacks up to 100%. And of course, whenever you go into a fight with Thor, you're probably going to want to start out with his A3. Now this is an AoE. Before attacking, he's going to self buff with increased attack and increased damage. He has a 75 bucks up to 100% of permanently decreasing the res of each enemy by 10% up to 50%, making it easier to place your debuffs. Speaking of debuffs, Thor also has a 100% chance, when he's got the accuracy for it, to place decrease speed on all enemies for two turns. Keep in mind, with having the res decreased up to 50%, every time you destroy a head or decapitate a head, this resets. Now, this is sort of where Thor stands out. This has saved me quite a few times. His Sky Rupture. Every time this champion deals damage, increases the thunder counter by 1 up to 10. Couple things. I wish that Polarium would implement a counter with some of the champions so that we would know, okay, Thor has a counter. Right now it's at 9 or 10 or it's about to activate. I think that would be pretty cool. The other thing is this also counts as an AoE and it also hits pretty hard. I love this ability. It's pretty nice. It's getting... It's like getting an extra hit in. Each thunder stack, stay with me here, increases this champion's damage, not his crit damage, his overall damage by 3% up to 30%. So when this is at 10, when his thunder counter is at 10, he has an increase to damage by 30%. And of course it resets. Once the thunder counter reaches 10, AoE places a stun for one turn, assuming you have the accuracy, after the attack, Thunder Counter gets reset to zero. So a lot of people might wonder, I mean, at this point, a lot of people probably already know because it's been talked about. I'm pretty much late on this, but this is only going to add to the Thunder Counter on moves that are placed directly by him. All right, so things like uh, a Toxic Set isn't going to add to his Thunder Counter, in case you were wondering. And if anybody else has some very specific other instances of where it does and does not, I would highly encourage you, because I can't think of anything else right now, to let the people know down in the comments. Increase all ally attacks and all battles by 30%. Before I go further, I want you to know that any stats or any gear sets that I'm showing you is, of course, going to be in the end game. If you cannot achieve any of these stats or these gear sets there are alternatives and take whatever priority stats that i provide and scale it down to your account for an example if i say 5000 attack and you can't get 5000 attack in a savage set scale it down to your account meaning take the 5000 which is the priority stat bring it down to something like 2000 or whatever works for you in the moment if you can't get a Savage set, or a Slayer set, or Instinct, or Lethal, or Merciless, you could definitely get Cruel. Cruel, Triple Cruel, is going to give you up to 15% of Ignore Enemy Defense. If you can't get 
any type of ignore enemy defense sets, Thor isn't going to hit that hard for you, but it's something to work towards. So eventually, when you do get this gear, you're going to have the knowledge, or at least the reference in this video, to know what to do or how to improve. And of course, if any of you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. Right now, I have him rocking a nine-piece Slayer set. Now, before you guys jump me in the comments, I know. I am aware his A2 is not coded as an AoE. I know that other people have tested out Slayer versus Merciless. I'm going to do my own video comparing the two myself, focusing specifically in Hydra, and that is something that I want to do for myself. I don't want to just blindly copy everybody else's uh, comments, even if Scratch did a good test. He's definitely something, somebody to to listen to, but this is just one thing that I, I want to do for myself. On my other account, I have him built out in Merciless. We're gonna jump into that. On this account, I can't achieve a nine piece Merciless, but I can achieve a nine piece Slayer. When it comes to building Thor, you're going to want to put him in ignore sets. So Savage, Cruel, Triple Cruel will help. Lethal, more enemy ignore defense, Merciless, I don't have accessories. I'm missing two accessories here to be able to pump out Merciless, but Merciless would be really good. In fact, Merciless is basically what everybody's going to tell you to build because it gives you 35% ignore defense. Now, James Gish 9202 said that you could even do Merciless, Instinct, or Savage, and then throw two pieces of Cruel on. That was a really good suggestion, so thank you for that. Basically, if you had two pieces of Cruel here, then you had four pieces of Merciless here, and then two pieces of Merciless here, that would give you 40% of ignore enemy defense, and that's huge. And then if you have Instinct, Instinct is another one, but it is a pay to win set. So I personally don't have too much of it. These are the specific pieces of gear. My goal with Slayer to try him out was to see how much damage he would do by way of his A3, and his passive in a Slayer set. So we're focusing on damage, some accuracy, survivability, having high crit damage, attack, speed. You'll notice that I have some investment into defense and HP, and that is because Thor actually has a pretty low base defense making him very squishy in my testing i've been finding that it's been rather difficult to keep him alive so i've had to focus a little bit more into his hp and defense well, hp when it comes to nukers i usually go for about forty thousand. attack 5000 defense 3000 speed 220 crit rate of course 100 percent crit damage 250 percent minimum and then accuracy and resistance oftentimes don't matter too much to me, but considering Thor does benefit from his blessing whenever he does place any debuffs, which we'll dive more into a little bit later, I made an effort to put some accuracy on him. Of course, take the priority stats that I mentioned to you and scale it down to your account. When it comes to his blessing, it's unanimous. Nature's Wrath is the way to go increases the damage inflicted by this champion for every debuff they successfully place, except debuffs placed by gear sets. At five stars, you're increasing the damage inflicted by 3% up to 15%, plus you get all of these big boost to stats. At six stars, which eventually I will buy from in the shop, increases the damage inflicted up to 30% plus another 10 speed, actually 15 speed because you get a plus five for legendary champions. This is going to outweigh the damage buff that you get from a 5-star Heaven Cast. And I guess if he didn't place any debuffs, then Soul Reap would be a really good option. And I think at 6 stars, Crushing Rend is going to be a strong contender. Although I'm not entirely sure, you guys can let me know in the comments if it's better to have a 6-star Crushing Rend or a 6-star Nature's Wrath. As always, do not blindly copy Masteries, but go ahead and feel free to blindly copy these Masteries. You're taking Crit Rate crit damage, whirlwind of death to boost your speed for every kill, life drinker in case his health gets low, this is going to help him survive a little bit, bring it down to increase damage against enemies with higher max HP, which is pretty much all the time, 
cycle of violence to decrease the cooldown of a random skill every time it exceeds 30% of the target's max HP, and Thor does hit pretty hard. Methodical for increase to damage on his A1 up to 10%. Kill streak, more damage, especially in Arena, which he does very well in, and then Helm Smasher. Helm Smasher is going to give a 50% chance of ignoring the target's defense. Now you could go War Master, but as always, I've already talked about this, most end gamers are going to use Helm Smasher because there is no cap as opposed to War Master, which does have a cap. It says right here, 10% of the target's max HP or 4% when attacking bosses. Resistance, we're taking improved parry so that anytime he's hit by a critical hit, damage mitigation by 8%. You could also take Blast Proof, decreases AOE attacks by 5%, but I prefer to take this. Rejuvenation, increase the value of shields, shield, shields, shields and heals. Have a 50% chance to remove a random debuff. Damage mitigation, as well as counterattack. And then for anybody wondering what my Thor would look like on my main account in Merciless, this is what it would look like. I would have to take gear off of Trunda, but I don't mind taking gear off of Varl. He's basically a pack mule right now, holding my Merciless gear for me. But this change would give him a little more attack, as opposed to the 5,900 he has currently in a 9-piece Slayer, and it would drop his crit damage by 16, dropping his accuracy and his speed as well. It is something that I'm going to try, but I am going to focus on Slayer versus Merciless in a different video. On my other account, I don't have any Merciless accessories, so the best I can do is a six-piece Merciless set. These are the priority stats, same thing, 100% crit rate, speed, attack, some survivability where I can get it, high crit damage. This one has a defense and an HP% percent chest plate. Again, this is for survivability because Thor is squishy, speed on speed. And then here's the blood shield ring, stone skin crit damage with crit damage on the amulet and then attack with attack on the refresh banner this is just the best gear that i currently have for him and then if you want to reference what he looks like in merciless right now 5800 attack 231 speed 62k hp 3200 defense 315 crit damage little less attack now that i'm looking at these stats he might be an interesting contender to compare between this Thor and my other Thor on my main account. But the issue is that it's not going to be, at least right now, a one for one because my teams are entirely different in Hydra. So like, let's say I wanted to take him into Hydra and compare the damage that I have with Thor on that account versus this account. The teams are entirely different. The builds are entirely different. So it wouldn't be a good one for one comparison. I think a better one for one comparison would be to take one Thor and then just switch out his gear between Slayer and Merciless. But unfortunately on this account, I don't have good Slayer. I don't even have a viable set. Now keep in mind, I still have not had a substantial amount of time to play around with Thor, but I figured let's go ahead and try taking him into Live Arena just to see how he does in Live Arena. All right, so we're starting off by killing Hegemon. I don't know what this champion does. Also, when it comes to Live Arena, I'm not the PvP guy. So if you're expecting something amazing from me, temper your expectations. Yeah, well, I'm not going to waste your guys' time with that. Let's go to the next one. All right, it seems like they might have given me somebody a little bit easier um lower level but he could still probably clap me so we'll see let's go ahead and get rid of rotos there's thor doing thor things skill on cooldown what are you doing you already know what you're going to do what, what are you doing okay i don't know why he took his time making that move but here we go, Thor, let's see what the damage is. 13, we hit reaction. A1, Veil, so no freeze. Wukong is gonna come back. Let's go ahead and transform first, and then hit the stun. Hopefully it procs, and it does.
and then hit the A1 with Thor, hitting for 53. Next fight. All right, and this guy brought in Odin. Odin has a nasty 40% boost to speed, but luckily our Cardiel is faster than his Arbiter. Now we're going to do our Mons things and probably going to want to Sheep Odin. We don't want that, that, uh, that nasty block buff coming up or block damage. Hit the A3. We weak hit there. We did 103 to Deacon. Yeah. All right. I I'm trying to give you guys a decent showcase, but they keep giving me people who are um, lower levels. But let's go ahead and try to work our way up. And let's go get rid of Rodos again. And there's Odin once more. The Fey Father is an intercept. Let's sheep him. So that way at least Thor can get a hit in. Let's see what this does here to the sheep. 134. All right, I think we have a decent one on our hands here. We have Taurus and we have UDK. Uh, this will be pretty good to see what we're going to be able to do up against these two. Both very tanky champions already. So let's go ahead and bring ourselves a little boost here. I purposely chose... Rodos, because I figured he was going to choose Rodos because he put UDK. That's usually the combo. But I wanted to see what we would be able to do um, with Thor against these two. So let's go ahead and try this out. Hitting for 75 on Taurus. Sky Rupture, 64. And I forgot what that one is over there. Um, over there. A little more interesting now. Let's go ahead and try to make our way around. He's going to revive. We're going to hit the A3 with Thor. Buffs are up. So we're going to see what that looks like. Let's just hit this. I'm not expecting Rotos to do anything this time around. All right. Let's see it. Boom. 50k, 24 on Taurus. They are unable to do anything so far. I'm so glad they gave me somebody else. Somebody a little bit stronger. I saw a meme talking about how ever since Thor came out, Rotos isn't... Or not Rotos, but Rathalos isn't really being used anymore. And it had the meme of of Andy from Toy Story dropping Rotos, a picture of Rotos, and picking up Thor, and I thought that was pretty funny. So what you're seeing right now is a loser who is purposely taking up the entire turn meter because he's losing, so that's him trying to take some semblance of control over his loss. I always go up against bomb teams. Wait, is my Cardiel faster than my Arbiter? That's crazy. All right, um, geez, well, Sun Wukong's about to do his thing. I kind of want to save everybody for Thor. Hmm. Let's just hit the A1. We'll risk it. Oh, thank God. All right, so Thor is going to have a chance to take a turn here. I was worried Harimia was going to do her thing, but let's see it. And, oh, darn. We don't kill. We weak hit against Harima. We're going to get rid of Tormund so we don't have to worry about freezing anymore. Sky Rupture? Nope, not yet. And let's just hit you. And then hit the A2 here. 54. All right. We have a great opportunity here to see what Thor does against Narcis. Maybe I should leave Cardiel faster than Arbiter so I could just do this anytime I go um, go up against the Tormund. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try to buff strip. Don't do too well there. Yes, he is a nasty foe. All right. Let's check it against Narcis. Looking at 51, but he still survives. That's nasty. Is he going to do that buff strip move? There you go. Yeah, that was a smart move. Damn. This is such a dumb move on my end, but <laughs> I brought AoE against these guys, against Mortu. But let's go ahead and, uh, well, let's just see if we can aim down on Hefrak here. Put some work in on him. All right, that Wukong is going to fuck me up here. I was hoping Cardio would join in for that, but I guess not. All right, maybe we can break the stone skin. We do break the stone skin, but of course, he does his move, his passive. Heprak does his passive whenever somebody dies. Now, let's see if we can just push back Hefrak's turn meter. 
Hopefully he doesn't have his passive. He does not. That's still good. Okay. Hit the A2 probably. Try to get rid of Arbiter. Nice, nice. I would too. I would too. And just hit the A1. Get a little bit of healing in. Boost turn meter. And then this A2. We're going to aim down on UDK. Try to spread the damage out proper around. 143 on Hefrak. Sky Rupture. Doing some work. Breaking the, breaking the uh, stone skin here. Let's do that. Pump that out. Boost. Alright, now Thor actually can do something here. Check this out. 112 on Wukong. 80k on Mortu. That Mortu has a lot of health. Is it a wrap? Yes, sir. Skadoosh. Oh, I guess uh, Arbiter took that win. I got paired up with the same guy again. He banned Cardiel this time. We'll see if he can withstand the power of sheep. Oh my god, he can. Fuck. Jesus, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Oh god. Miracle here. Oh my god. Oh my god. He got me. That was a smart choice on his on his end. Good job, man. Good job. Good win. Isn't it always nice whenever you lose and then you fight that same guy that beat you and then you win? That always feels good. What doesn't feel good is if you fight the same guy again and then lose. Doesn't Eostrid have a 30%? He chose Wukong. 28% for a speed lead. Let's get rid of Eostrid because she's been doing some some mean things to me lately. Let's hit this A3. 35 on her. Weak hitting against Harima. Try to provoke. Not provoking today. She said no, not today. Well, let's push turn meter back. And Wukong is about to come back. So of course we're going to take up a turn by transforming. And then placing a nice stun. Now, didn't receive the stun. Anybody play Black Myth Wukong? On my other channel, I did a full story explained of Black Myth Wukong. So I'm plugging in that other channel right now. 67 to Harima. Thor is also a really good farmer for stage 15. I think Tairaku Braids was the one who came out with the video. I'm not sure, but yeah, uh, he can solo the entirety of stage 15 Minotaur. By the way, I really think Polarium needs to bump this up to like stage 20 or 25 or something. I don't know why Minotaur is so outdated, but as you can see, he's keeping the turn meter back, doing heavenly amounts of damage, 19 seconds, and then if you're struggling with spider, like doing a spider tournament for a fusion or anything, stage 10 is probably going to be one of the best stages to do using Thor to solo. Now stage 10 has a bug. Some people don't think it's a bug. I personally consider it a bug because if you look at the stat drops, um, I'm not going to get into it, but basically Thor can solo stage 10 right there. So two turns, seven seconds. It's magnificent. But yeah, that's what the bug was. More five-star artifacts drop in stage 10. So he's a really good champion for farming spider, especially if you're looking for silver early on and you happen to have Thor. And I believe you could probably achieve this speed or something close to it with even lower stats, even less gear than I have because it's only stage 10. And then in the Cursed City, he's been doing very well for me uh, here as well. This is normal because I've already finished everything, or not everything, but I've finished well, as much as I could on hard. So now I'm just going back, taking whatever I can. Okay, and something else that I did here was I took the Trunda team that I normally use on normal or Hydra. So 35 minutes, hit the turn limit here. Trunda did 42, uh, 422 million by herself, almost 423, total score of 522. And if we move a little bit forward, same team, same run. All I did was replace Thor with Trunda. That's it. And Thor did 303 million by himself in the nine piece Slayer. So you can see the comparison there. About 100 million more with Trunda. Full auto, set it, walked away. Okay, so here we are. Thor is about to take a move here. 22, I saw on this head. 
it's really nice to have AoEs. So let's see what this does. 100 over here, 84 over there. That was the sky rupture. Check this out on the A1, 33, 28. I think that ally attacks also count towards his thunder counter because I saw in that counter attack that the sky rupture passive moved up. Got the ricochet 201 here. Sky Rapture, 291 right there. Now let's see what the A1 does. Layer proc if you saw that, that was like a bunch of 200 and 300 Ks. 395, 555 over there. Okay. 717 on that head. 285, 483. 100, 1 million. Did you guys see that? 1 million. Over 1 million. That was 1.3 million. Okay, and Thor did 170 million by himself. Second place was Razalvarg, and then Venus actually out damaged. Or it looks like she out damaged Cupidus, but again, she's in a hex set. That damage gets registered to her. Thor Fayhammer is a strong champion.